play lovely with my game in the studio. He might just no homo flame me. <laughs> no <laughs> homo. Ah, I'm gonna burn him to the ground. We've got our Jigga booth this week, but no capes and no. I don't know how to run Pro Tools, so uh, we're sending out a shot of the Jigga booth. That's right. Hey, it's, we didn't call it that. That no, was named by Capes Pilomino from yes. the Real Hood Wide. Who currently is uh, needing two thousand dollars in bail across the street? If you'd like to help his help us get Capes out of prison for next week's show, don't send fail me, on the bail. Send me an email, Jiggy Jaguar, JiggyJaguar dot com. Hey, we can. Um, there's a fundraiser called uh, Toomp's Bedroom where we're going to be raising this money for Capes. So, uh, yeah, twenty dollars a pop. Thank you, Mike. Uh, it's early, I know. <laughs> fuck it. We got get a hundred people. Or? We get. <laughs> By the way, uh, we're going to be talking about my, my, my personal favorite, uh, Marcia Smith, later on in the broadcast from Community Access. She is, she is, I guess, if you want to equate it, um, Mike Game and Toop, she is my Toop, to, I am, and I am her Mike Game, I guess. I, I think don't know. Toop is maybe three times the weight of, no, no, I mean, she's, she's a good girl. Ooh, uh, oh, uh, of Marsha uh, Smith Stevens. Yeah, Marsha. See, see, this is the thing. If Marsha and Tupa, Tupa, if Marsha and Tupa ever got into a fight, Tupa would kick her ass because Marsha's like a, she's like a, a shrew. Yeah, uh, <laughs> like the untamed shrew. <laughs> oh, she's she's a shrew and she's been tamed. We won't talk about that here. Um. We're gonna, screw, not we're gonna, screw. Yes. Yes, okay. Yes, Mar- Marcia needs to be screwed. Oh, wait, she's screwing other... I, I don't know what it is. It doesn't matter. Uh, John Quinn also today on this broadcast on the phone, and we will be talking to Adam from the band Two Cents on the telephone as well. And uh, it's it's it, it's like it's going down like the Titanic's violinists here at uh, JiggyJaguar.com. If you get a chance, check us out. Livestream.com slash JiggyJaguar. You can also go to JiggyJaguar.com and check us out because, of course... As we all have said many times before, Ninja Larry supposedly owns me, and I wouldn't be around without Ninja Larry. Now, I don't know what he was doing for the last, oh, I don't know, 16 years that I've been doing this radio show, but revisionist history. And yes, Mike Game, we will talk about Vince McMahon here in a few, and I say revisionist history. <laughs> I do want to chat with you about wrestling, sir. I'll go get my power supply at that time. <laughs> <laughs> Not that I don't like it. I love the midgets. The midgets were so fun. I got my warning letter from Access because of the midgets. That's but I right. I'm not sorry. <laughs> You're not sorry about we're the midgets. Finally, we finally been officially notified about uh, the imagery you put out. The fact that I cannot wear Access gear in my interviews because they think that I am a member of Community Access. But you own all that stuff. I, I mean, know. you either bought it or earned it through Valentine's Hey, if they want it back, send me a check for 200 bucks. I'll give it back to you. Oh, really? And then, and then we'll just stop on, on the yeah. whole Access thing. Yeah. Well, send, send me a check. I, I, I've got an announcement here. Okay. <laughs> I'm kind of thinking You're going to give me more Access it, gear? Well, <laughs> and this is a suggestion from another guy in town, and I've been kind of mulling it over. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> what do we make our own kind of, you know, Salina Sling County YouTube, where if you got a Salina video, you can upload it, and it'll be, oh. on, uh, you know, we'll call it uh, Salina TV. Is it dot info? <laughs> yeah, that's it. That's it. <laughs> we got it. <laughs> Salina TV dot info. Hey, Maybe we ought to go that route. We'll, I think we'll, we'll have to mull that over. We'll have to mull um, that over. I don't we'll, we'll have to get a computer geek like uh, Mr. Um, Mike Weber. That's right. Hopefully computer he's Mike. listening. You're a good man. Computer Mike, who is one of the guys who is not in jail. Um, we've got we've got many of my friends locked up across the street, and I don't know why. Um, oh, yeah, they're crack dealers. The uh, no. thing is. <laughs> that's what they were busted That's for. what they were busted Allegedly. for. Allegedly. Allegedly. Mike Game will never say the word allegedly. He just full out just goes, I take credit for it. Bam, there it is. Yeah, that shit really happened. <laughs> <laughs> You're great. You are great. And and, and I, I feel so bad for Corey. He's just kinda <laughs> he's just kinda in the middle of this whole thing, brother. You just yeah, I've had my problems. I'm trying to keep the peace <laughs> I've been known as an asshole for too long. Is this thing on? Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, can you hear me? All right. Yeah. All right. Corey, you got you. You're like out in the middle of this whole yeah. thing here. You're like a. He started it. You're like a. <laughs> Corey, 
Corey. I'm Corey the mastermind behind it all. Dirty 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 UA. Dirty. What are you doing over there? Ooh, the dirty Man, y'all fucking on my high. I don't know. I'm oh, just trying to, well, I'm trying to maintain my high, fucking with y'all, that's, and it's that's that's a good not, thing to advertise your high when we're across the street from the, from the cops. Uh, <laughs> that's a great idea. <laughs> allegedly, allegedly, allegedly. <laughs> it's more of a road buzz. Anyway. Yes, it's yeah, allegedly. More, more of a road buzz. Yes. Yeah, um, just allegedly. As as always, ladies and gentlemen, the uh, the Jiggy Jaguar radio broadcast is brought to you by our good friends. At Jezebel's. That's right. My home away from home, Jezebel's, in the great city of Wichita. Check out Jezebel'sWichita.com. They are uh, they are a hell of a lot better than that place where the hot where the women take their clothes off under hot lights called the Wild Wild West. That's hey, not um, a strip and, club. And they they like check those chicks out down there. Yes, they can't, indeed. They can't have any misdemeanors or nope. nothing there. Nope. No DUIs. So. They're not. They're not like uh, the the Asian chick out here at a. Uh, Wild Wild West, who you walk in and she just gets done dancing, and she goes, "You want to give me a dollar?" And I said, "No, honey, I didn't see your dance." Well, it was good. Give me a dollar. No, toots, go away. Uh, Jezebel's forty five twenty East Forty Seventh Street South in Wichita, so. Kansas. That's right, Jezebel's Wichita dot com. I got to get through my plug, Ross. <laughs> uh, I understand, understand. We love Jezebel's. We do. You're right. GoDaddy dot com. Save ten percent off world class web hosting packages. The banner is available at JiggyJigWhyYou.com. Also, uh, go to Buy.com and get a special uh, offer on these uh, flip video cameras that, that Ross sports and runs around the country with. Also, Gimpy Goose, MySpace.com slash Gimpy Goose. 100 buttons for 15 bucks. You can't shake a stick at that. In fact, we tried. And Ninja Larry accused it of being untrustworthy. Larry, we actually love you. <laughs> we really do. We love Larry. I just, I just uh, wish it, he wasn't it, insane and had gone off the reservation and caused problems and and told said, Marcia, told Marcia things and and ratted people out and threw me under the bus because I have no problem throwing myself under the bus. <laughs> Believe you, me, you do it I do that Sunday. every single <laughs> Sunday on this show. Now, uh, we're, we're going to take a quick little time out here on the big broadcast so everybody can go out and, and get a smoke break and, you know, do, do all the usual things that they do on, uh, on this show. But uh, we're, we're going to flip it over to uh, our good friend Adam from the band Two Cents talking about the big show coming up at the Cotillion in the great city of Wichita here in just a couple weeks with uh, Dawson and the boys from Seasons After. So uh, here's Adam from Two Cents on the world-famous Cheeky Jig while you show. When we get back, we will talk to Corey. Oh, uh, brother. <laughs> I feel for you, brother. Be- being with all this negative energy, as, as uh, the David Norellians of the world would say. Yeah, I'm usually uh, tied to it all anyway, so it's yeah. Norellians. 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 Uh, hopefully I- I I'll get that, that eventually. Best ring, the best what do Is you that still think? a city? <laughs> Norellian. Norellian. <laughs> they, they should be... <laughs> I missed the sub. It should, it, sub all. In there. it should be a sub in there. <laughs> We're gonna take a quick time out. When we come back, we've got more. So keep a lot, keep it loaded to the world famous Jiggy Jaguar. You show over there at www.jiggyjaguar.com. Okay. One of 700 radio shows included in the book, Radio Wants You, an intimate portrait of 700 radio shows that welcome guests. What a loser. And this is Interviews from the Past and Present, now available on JiggyJagwire.com. I was really surprised about that. Back here on the world-famous Jiggy Jaguar show at www.jiggyjaguar.com. And uh, on the phone with me is uh, Adam from the band Two Cents. What's going on, brother? Not much, man. Enjoying my Wednesday afternoon. <laughs> you can check out these guys on the Internet at myspace.com slash two cents. Uh, they've got uh, their music up there. They've got upcoming uh, gigs. Uh, you know these guys because they have played pretty much played with all the major headliners across the country. We're talking OTAP, we're talking Corn. Uh, they're going to be coming to the great city of Wichita, Kansas in a few weeks with uh, Seasons After. Um, you guys must be greasing a lot of palms to get on these tours. <laughs> How are you doing this? Uh, you know, uh, we're fortunate enough to have a really good uh, booking agent and team behind us. And, um, We've been fortunate enough, too, that uh, when we submit our music uh, to go out with these people, that they, 
you know, they they appreciate it and they like the vibe of the band, and uh, you know, it's something that they want to be uh, a part of their uh, a part of their night. So we're very flattered to um, be able to go out with these people. Now, uh, you guys are uh, all over the place, uh, all the time, playing all sorts of different tours and and doing you know doing the damn thing. Um, my God, how did you? How did you guys get together and, and, and get this uh, get this thing rolling like you did? Um, <clears throat> well, me and my brother have been playing and uh, you know playing together for for God since it seems like forever now. Yeah. But uh, around uh, 2008, we got uh, our friend buddy uh, Derek Hopley from he used to be in a band called Mantis, and he was on the Battle for the Alpha <laughs> show, and we knew him for when Two Cents toured with Mantis back in the day. And we got our uh, good friend Jason Wendell from another band we used to tour with called Burden of Guilt. And uh, we kind of, you know, got together, uh, started writing some songs, tried to put together uh, put together an album's worth of stuff. And we wound up coming out, you know, landing a pretty killer deal with a great company and, um, you know, getting on the road with some awesome bands. And right now we're just trying to, trying to climb that ladder one ring at a time. <laughs> now, uh... This isn't a bad little schedule. You're on the tour with Corn in the Spring, and then in the fall, Black Label Society. And during the summer, just mixed in dates here and there with people like Seasons After and stuff like that. Uh, man, you you guys, uh, whatever you're paying your booking people and your web people, double it. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, we're very we're very uh, very fortunate because because uh, because this is this is a hell of a deal. Now. Uh, how did you get hooked up with the seasons after deal? Did they? Uh, did you play with them or something? Or we got to play with them in uh, Arizona um, in Phoenix for a radio festival out there called U Fest, and you know it kind of got put together through our agency, and we're really excited to be able to go out and play some smaller club dates with those guys and get in front of kids and more of a uh, intimate type atmosphere as opposed to. Um, as much as we did love the corn tours, one of the best tours we were on, but uh, we're playing hockey arenas and, and bigger places like that, which is awesome. But it's also really, really good, too, to be able to get kids into a smaller club and uh, be closer to them, get more in their face, and have it be more of a uh, personal vibe. Now, uh, you guys have been around since 2005. Um, how has the Internet, I guess, uh, impacted you guys? Because you, you guys are one of the few bands that is... Uh, that has made it basically on, you know, the internet side of things. There's a lot of bands that you know that they, you know, like Pantera. These guys back in the day, they didn't have the internet. They they had to get out there and you know tour, 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 tour. And you guys have this luxury of kind of having the internet and Facebook and all this stuff. Um, and well, and and it, and it doesn't also help that you've got a you know a great booking agent, great press people, things like that. Um, how has the internet impacted you guys? I would say the biggest thing the internet has done for us has been able to uh, keep in contact with our fans. Um, you know, on a personal level, we answer all of our. Um, I'm sorry, excuse me. <coughs> we answer all of our our mail. We get to the MySpace page personally, so. We're able to uh, keep in contact with them. Now, uh, you guys have been, uh, you know, pretty much all over the country. Um, how has the reception been to you guys? Oh, it's amazing. I mean, we, we get blown away. I mean, when we pull up into a show, we're opening for a bigger band like, you know, Corn or Chevelle or Five Finger Death Punch or somebody. <laughs> I'm sorry, somebody like this. Uh, you know, we realize that when we climb on stage, 90% of the people have never even heard of our band before. And it's it's kind of cool. It's like a battle. Like from the first song to the last song, you know, you, you gain momentum and you gain you gain energy. And by the time we leave the stage every night, it's pretty much, um, we're pretty much blown away with the, the, the amount of applause and screams and crowd reaction we get. It's, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's a humbling and exciting feeling. Now, uh, I understand from uh, some of my research, you guys are in the process of uh, shooting a, uh, a weekly documentary, do, doing like a pilot for, for a weekly documentary about the band. <laughs> yeah, well, we, we actually were doing that um, right before we finished this record about a year ago, and we made this, we made this pilot kind of 
uh, I guess it was a weekly documentary slash reality show pilot about, you know, us trying to land our next record deal, trying to write these songs, trying to, you know, make moves in the music business. And uh, the entire time we're, like, living in the house with my folks, which is... <laughs> which is crazy enough as it is. So the whole band is in the house with my with my two parents who are like, you know, in their in their late fifties. And we kind of we kind of videoed um we kind of videoed like the goings on on the daily routine. And funny enough it actually got um it got picked up by uh it got bid on by uh, one of the major network. I can't say which network it is, but um, we yeah, but we uh, it was cool too because we're very strapped for cash, you know. At this point in our <laughs> yeah. lives, we're we're very much the starving artists. But uh, we had to make a decision whether we wanted to stay in Los Angeles and make a reality show and a bunch of money, or we wanted to get on the road and you know tour and support our record and you know really play shows. So it was a, it was a, it wasn't really a rough decision to make, but we chose to turn down the TV deal and turn down the money. And kind of just go out on the road and, uh, you know, make a fan, one fan at a time, and let our music and our live show speak for itself. And uh, we have no regrets on it, but, um, you know, when, I, when, when I'm struggling to buy a Happy Meal, I kind of flash back on that. I'd be like, oh, I wonder, I wonder what would have happened if I would have just taken that paycheck. I wonder what would have happened. <laughs> yeah. Now, uh, we're, we're speaking with uh, one of the big heavy hitters in the music industry, Two Cents. Um, t tell me about this. Um, some of these people you guys have played in front of and opened for. Uh, the list, that the short list, is amazing. Corn, Five Finger Death Bunch, Shadows Fall, Kill Switch Engage, Chevelle, Buck Cherry, Guar, Otep, Static X. You know, you know what's funny about Static X? I actually uh, met, uh, I think it was Wayne, uh, in uh, a Walmart here in Salina about oh, no uh, way. a year ago. I was at Walmart one night, and he was reading Hot Rod magazines. And I'm like, is that the guy from Static X? I'm like, <laughs> no way. So like, uh, like, like the media guy that I am, I followed him all over Walmart. <laughs> nice. <laughs> and nice. Uh, finally, I, he got ready to check out, and I said, hey, are you... Uh, you're from Static X? And he's like, yeah, oh, I'm Wayne. And it was like the minute he said that, all these hot chicks run over and, like, tackle him over there at the Walmart. That's pretty funny. But uh, he, he said, yeah, we were just passing through. We had a, we had a gig in Denver, and we were gonna, we were on our way to Kansas City. And, you know, we, I, I don't even know where we are. And I said, well, you're in Salina, Kansas. <laughs> so nice. That, how, how, was, how was it playing uh, with Static X and some of these guys that you've toured with? Oh, they were... Uh, Static X was um, Static X was a very fun time. That was when we were supporting our first record, and uh, we were really a lot less, um, you know, had a lot less wind in our sails. And they were still cool enough to completely support us and take us out. And yeah. um, those guys were a blast. One of the other fun bands um, we got to go out with a bunch was uh, Rise Against. Yeah. And they're uh, they're, you know, in, in my opinion, as far as. Um, you know, as far as new school punk rock goes, those guys hold it down and they stay true to the uh, the traditions and values of what that music and that scene was about. And it was cool. You know, I remember we we had a little run on the 2003 Warp Tour, and that was like, you know, we we had different members. We were we were still trying to figure out what band we were, but um, I remember seeing Rise Against on the 2003 Warp Tour, and you know, they had a uh, you know a few hundred people out to see them every day, maybe a little less, maybe a little more some days. And then when we went out and uh, toured with them a few years back, like two years back, you know, we were playing airport hangers to like 7,000 kids. And it was, uh, it was pretty inspiring to see them go from, you know, from the band on the Volcom stage at the Warp Tour to uh, headlining this massive tour that was like, you know, couldn't even fit in the theaters. They were getting put in the airport hangers. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> wow. Now, uh, if you guys want to see... Uh Two cents. These guys have been getting hit by all sorts of different media, fake and otherwise, the last couple months. You guys have been uh, all over the place, and uh, you can see them live Wednesday, uh, 728. Uh, hell, in, into this month, July 28th. Uh, Two cents playing with Taking Dawn and uh, opening for the, the legendary rock guys out of Wichita Seasons After. Uh, it's at the Cotillion Ballroom in the great city of Wichita, Kansas. Uh, 7 to 11 uh, show 
uh, cotillion.com, 722-4201, area code 316 to get your tickets, uh, 1250 for this thing. That is not that bad of a deal to see three awesome bands. And uh, you guys, uh, man, you guys just keep rolling. Yeah, yeah, de- definitely, and that's the uh, plan is to keep rolling all through the uh, fall, winter, and on into 2011. This is uh, this is going to be a, a big deal, and uh, you guys are going to be playing Wichita uh, a couple different times. Uh, you're going to be playing with Seasons After, and then you're going to be swinging in with Black Label Society. Uh, uh, my God, that, that, what, what do you guys think about all this? What would what, what you... Uh, when you think about all these different bands that you're getting to tour with and play in front of and everything. You no, know, we're just grateful, man, and it's really cool because we get to get out in front of uh, lots of different styles of bands. You know, we don't, <clears throat> we don't, we're not really, the thing, I think the thing we're most excited about is we're not pigeonholed into just going out with just metal bands or just hard rock bands or just punk bands or, you know, we're, we get to, we get to hop across the board and get to see all these different flavors and styles of music and um, you know we're really excited i can't wait to you know i can't wait to just get a drink and watch zach wilde shred the guitar every night that's definitely not gonna <laughs> suck that's not that's not a bad gig if you can get it nope not at all <laughs> now uh i i did i did some checking and i seen you guys have a youtube channel much like everybody seems to have anymore um great great videos you guys got up there yeah, we got a couple. You know what? Uh, I, I I should be more versed on what is actually on our YouTube channel. I'm a little less versed on it, but um, I checked I've checked it out recently, and I've been uh, I've been I've been pretty impressed with some of the stuff that um, some of the content we've been able to get up there. It's uh, some of it's pretty funny, some of it's pretty um, gritty, and it's it's just good times. Now uh, you can see these guys two cents. They are going to be. Uh, kicking your ass and doing, you know, all all the good stuff. July twenty eighth, and uh, it's a Wednesday. That 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 should be a, a a decent show. You know, there there's people go out to Wednesday show. Why is that? Be, be, being in a band and being a fan too. Um, why is it people go out to some of these some of these hard rock shows on some of the oddest nights, like Tuesdays and Wednesdays? Um, well, I think, I think, you know, the big thing about it, too, is, is, you know, when you hit a place like, um, you know, Wichita, or you yeah. hit a place like Kansas City, or, or just, you know, you know, it could be anywhere, um, you know, Clifton, New Jersey, um, you know, it doesn't really matter, it's, it's whatever night it falls on, it's like, that's their night to go out and have a good time, and, uh, you know, rock and roll fans and heavy metal fans definitely aren't, have never been intimidated about odd hours and weird nights, we pretty much like to, uh, we pretty much like to tie it on whenever we can, so. Well, uh, Wednesday, July 28th, Cotillion Ballroom in the great city of Wichita, Kansas, 7 to 11, this, this thing is going to be huge, it's going to be taking down two cents and seasons after. Now, uh, is that the only, is, is that kind of just an off gig you guys are doing? The, or No, we're actually out with uh, Taken Dawn and Seasons After for three weeks. We start on the 24th in Phoenix and work all our way through um, to about the middle of August with those guys. Oh, that's cool. So do you guys get any time off before you jump on the Black Label Society thing, or do you really need any time off? Oh, whoa, there is a giant rat in my kitchen. <laughs> wow, that is big. God damn, my God. All right. Um. Anyway, so I'm sorry. What was it, what was the uh, what was the question again? I'll tell Here, I'm you. I'm sorry. Wait, hold on a second. Block it in. Block it in so it can't get out. Uh, what, what was the question again, bro? I was <laughs> sorry about that, brother. That's <laughs> no, okay. Hey, um, did you guys get any time off between? Oh yes. Uh, uh, you, seasons after and Black Label Society. Absolutely, we get some. Uh, we get a good chunk of time off. We're going to come home and try to uh, shoot a video for our new single. Now you know. Well, uh, I'll, I'll tell you if, if if that rat in your kitchen don't know, he, he does now. <laughs> yeah, definitely, <laughs> definitely. Well, uh, you, you guys, you guys just seem to uh, seem to keep rolling and seem to keep doing and having all sorts of things happen to you. That's that's fabulous. Uh, I can't wait to see you in Wichita. I know we're going to be down there doing some stuff for uh, A Fresh Entertainment Magazine and uh, the the big show known as Jiggy Jag TV. So ho- hopefully we will uh, we'll catch up with you guys when you see when we see you in Wichita. 
Awesome. Well, thank you so much, and I appreciate your guys' support and everything and uh, helping us get our name out there, and I look forward to seeing you guys in Wichita as well. Definitely, man. Well, uh, keep me updated on that rat. I'm going to ask. Well, yeah, it's, I'm actually tending to this right now, right? Because <laughs> I get off the phone, I'm going to have to MacGyver this thing out of my house. <laughs> I will ask you when we have you on Jiggy Jake TV, did you get the rat? So just, awesome. be, just, just be prepared to retell the story you're about to go through, brother. So okay. uh, I'll talk to you soon, man. Have a good one. All right, take care. All right, later. There's something very, very wrong with us. I feel like such an idiot. Quite right, so you should. We're mutants. Oh, ungratefully. <laughs> Find out more at JiggyJagwire.com. You are singing and sagging with Jiggy Jag. Jiggy Jaguar. What, what the website? <laughs> what, what's what, what is it? JiggyJackass.com? Okay. This is a jackass. Jiggy Jaguar shit going. <laughs> no. This is a jackass. JiggyJaguar.com. www.jiggyjaguar.com. Jiggy Jaguar. <laughs> At www.jiggyjaguar.com. Get $96 in free extras with your domain name from GoDaddy.com. Each domain includes free hosting with a website builder, a free blog, complete email, and much more. Click on the banner on JiggyJigWire.com, and when you get there, enter code POD88 when you check out and save an additional 10% on your order. Get your piece of the Internet at GoDaddy.com. Some restrictions apply. See site for details. The Midwest's best-kept secret. Wake the Dead 3. Will be held at the Bison Arena and the Kansas State Fairground October 9, 2010. Tickets will be available at the KansasStateFair.com. Wake the Dead Festival 3 will be held at the Bison Arena on the Kansas State Fairgrounds October 9, 2010. Tickets will be available at KansasStateFair.com. 13 awesome bands performing on two stages. $10 advance online purchase. $13 at the door. This is an all-ages event. It features some of the greatest in rock and metal in Central Kansas. Featuring the bag music record label artist Vintage Burning. Pretty by our good friends at Budweiser, Holiday Inn Express, Mega Metal Magazine, Papa John's, Better Ingredients, Better Pizza, Papa John's, Pepsi, Hollywood Music Television, Charlie Wheeler Photography, and Jet Fox Promotions. October 9, 2010. Tickets available at KansasStateFair.com. $10 advance. $13 at the door. An all-ages event. 24-7, 365, and available worldwide on the Internet. This is the number one talk show online. The world-famous Jiggy Jaguar Show. Barbecue. How do you barbecue? Grill or smoke or even use your oven? There's one sure way to make it great every time, all the time. Jordan's Juice Barbecue Sauce. Jordan's is a unique blend of seasoning. It doesn't mask the flavor of the food. Jordan's enhances the taste of not just any meat. It makes a great dip. Drizzle it on vegetable, hash browns, and eggs. Jordan's Juice Barbecue Sauce comes in mild, medium, and hot. Find it on the web at jordanproductions.net or just Google Jordan's Juice. Go on. Juice it up with Jordan's. This is John Feldman of Goldfinger. The meat industry is making a killing off you and the dead animal on the end of your fork. Stop eating the garbage they feed you. Wake up and start thinking for yourself. The animal you ate for dinner suffered horribly until the day she died. So open your eyes and liberate your diet. Choose vegan. Visit PETA2.com. Thank you. Wake up! Wake up! Back to the Jiggy Jaguar Show on the network. The master debater, the cunning linguist, the admirable iteration, yes indeed. The whole reason your mother told you not to listen to internet radio. I am the whole reason why they say internet radio will never make a profit. Me, me, the GI double G. And uh, we're getting to go today. By the way, all of our guests today will receive uh, Reno Brown's Rise to Power, hosted by DJ Lady K. Lady K. Fuck that, we want money. <laughs> we need uh, we need to get rid of these things because Capes is in jail, and uh, oh. they're on a stack back there on the computer. If you guys want to take one, go ahead. You're each you're each entitled to one. 
Cash Hollister regards Dang it as a frisbee, but you guys oh, can no. listen to it and see what you think. Uh, <laughs> we've got, we've got, Damn. we've got some interesting guests in the studio today, and uh, the ever controversial, ever popular Mr. Mike Game is with us today. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> saying anything, Mike. What are you doing? I don't have a mic. <laughs> I took the mic from this motherfucker. <laughs> you took the mic from the dirty UA? What are you man, doing? we drove oh, from real. Topeka or some area and we trying to do this show. We we might get boycotted again to times two and I don't want to drive down here for nothing. So, <laughs> well, uh, what the fuck, man? Well, well, gentlemen, hang out. Here, here's the mic. Here's the mic. Fuck it. Mike. Hi, I'm my game and I'm here. <laughs> I'm just waiting for my turn. <laughs> okay, brother. Well, uh, Corey, man, you yeah, just kind of a crazy week to get booked. You, huh? you, you have you have stepped in to a hornet's nest here. Um, you're, you're you're like a tarantula at a picnic. Yeah. It's uh, <laughs> or maybe almost an innocent bystander getting caught, right. caught up in the crossfire of all this caught hostility. Caught up in the crossfire, man. not to be uh, confused with that game that they had out years ago. Remember crossfire? Don't get caught in the crossfire! Oh, yeah. He's like oh, the yeah. messenger talking to the Spartans. He is, <laughs> he's not <laughs> like that. Yeah. Yeah, I gotta, I gotta find that oh, ad. Oh, my back? Yeah. Right here? Yeah. All right. Rapper had wait, wait, the wait, rapper wait. distance. It's, it's a different mic every game. time you sing. Or, or rap. Uh, yeah. You know, the, uh, does, does any remember, anybody remember? Uh, oh, God, yeah, it was the TV show or something. It was the Crossfire game. Crossfire. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. The marble. <laughs> Looks like a lot of parts to move. I've never tried that one. <laughs> we, did, we, did, we, did hungry, we did Hungry Hungry Hippos. Uh, That's what it looks like. Man. Everybody remember that? Hungry yeah, hungry yeah. Hippos? I think you just smash the button and they eat all the marbles. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that was fun. It was like... Let's let's devour things. Hungry, hungry hippos. I are know. we are we talking about the game the or game dinner time game. or dinner time at Jessica Tupa's house? Uh, <laughs> <we go>. <laughs> <laughs> I knew it was See, that's why that's why I took the mic. And, and I'm that's trying to thank you, dirty boy. Thank mic. you. <laughs> Now, uh, now, now, Corey, by the way, his appearance today brought to you by our good friends at Flash Bandit Clothing, FlashBanditUniverse.com. They need to send me another shirt because they're. My, my other shirt has kind of got some problems. but I uh, thought it kind of washed away. It just yeah. washed what? away. First wash. When I washed it in the wash, it just you, washed You didn't get away. a warranty on that? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Here we that's, go. That's why I always notice Cash always has a brand new. Oh, yeah. Always brand new. He always has brand thing. new stuff, man. Uh, Jesus blesses him with it. <laughs> God. <laughs> Oh my God, my game! The last time somebody insulted Cash on this program, he showed up out of nowhere at the end of the show and glared at me. I don't know uh, what happened, but he just showed up. It, it could was happen like, again. It could happen again very well, easily. He wouldn't want to show up this fucking week. He have a fucking. He'll be, <laughs> be going down to Salina Hospital, and I'll be going across the street. Well, nah. <laughs> I'll say hi to Cape when you get over there. No, I'm just now, fucking uh, with you, Cash. I'm now, just fucking with you. I love the Cypher show. Uh, <laughs> I don't. Oh. oh hey, you were on it. You, you, you were, were on, on the virgin, virgin. You were on the Virgin show. You you, you cracked the hymen, baby. I uh, know the way the way you sauntered up to that mic, baby. It was just that was great. Well, Corey, uh, t- tell tell me about just your. My God, where do we even start? Well, I, I don't know. <laughs> usually, uh, usually I'm a pretty controversial guy, but I look kind of like the soft one on today's show, you know, <laughs> for the first time in a, in a while. Yeah, now, uh, now, now, you, you, uh, you originally are from Newton, Kansas. Yeah, yeah. I God, was, what the hell is there to do at Newton besides rap? Man, uh, not much, man. Just kind of, uh, actually. Uh, they got I, a great subway there, but yeah, that's about it. Yeah, I mean, it's good to, to, <laughs> to go back and hang out when I want to get out of Wichita. I mean, I got family out there. That's about all it's good for. I try not to spend too much time out there. But yeah. yeah. Well, oh, uh, can I interject with a Newton fact? I was watching <laughs> American Pickers. And this, <laughs> and uh, Frank got a sign from the Vickers Motor Company. Vickers Motor Company was based in Newton, Kansas, and it was the 
first motor oil company in Kansas. Okay. They sold the total in 1980 for 1.1 mil billion, 1.1 billion dollars. Okay. Newton fun fact. I wasn't even aware of that. Thank <laughs> you. Thank you for the information. <laughs> Go ahead, Corey Yeah, but, right <laughs> <laughs> but actually, uh, I'm actually, I would say pretty much from Wichita. I only lived in Newton until I was about seven, so, yeah. Uh, yeah, 24 now, so most of my life's been spent in Wichita. Now, uh, how did you get interested in doing hip-hop? Ah, uh, man, it was, uh, I mean, there's a couple different things. It's maybe from, uh, just, uh, I mean, stepfather I had, you know, he was a Beastie Boys listener and all that when I was a little younger, and, uh. Sir Mixed I mean some of that maybe more generic stuff that was out in the early 90s but as a kid you know I mean I liked the sound of it and then uh, maybe it was about fifth grade when I first heard uh, Bone Thugs actually it was one of their first uh, or it was the East 1999 project and I just loved the sounds of it it was just something kind of different that I that I really liked and it kind of got it got me turned on to the hip hop yes so that, this that would be the band to bring back to the blue coat Bone Thug. Are they all still alive? Oh uh, yeah, actually, I think I think they just put out a new album. Actually, oh really? I think it's called You and I. I believe. Yeah, the name uh, of it. I think they did, they they might add a little extra security <laughs> that way. Tim <laughs> Dixon, if you're listening, <laughs> Buck Bone Thugs and Harmony at the Blue Goat. Tim Dixon. <laughs> so, uh, we 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 we, we kid Timmy. We know he listens to the broadcast. So. Uh, that, hey, that that'd be a good show. They bring in Born Thugs and Harmony, and then you can be uh, the opener. Yeah, that that'd be cool. I mean, <laughs> but that's not something uh, I would define my uh, my hip hop off of. You know, I was young. It, it kind of got me started. But then, of course, as I got into middle school, you know, when Eminem, you know, and all this stuff was coming out, and then there was or as ICP calls him, feminine. <laughs> and but, then there's uh, also the uh, <laughs> the No Limit and the Cash Money thing was real popular uh, when I was in middle school. You know. Uh, that's most of the stuff we we talked about then in middle school, opposed to like the schoolwork. It was more the hip hop and what was going on in the scene at that time. Now, uh, your first full project, "Death of the Prima Donna." Yeah, yeah, that was a that was a. Tell me about this uh, thing. Yeah, that was uh, just a mixtape. It was kind of uh, kind of had two meanings to it, I guess. A lot of it was just uh, death to the the stereo, just the flashy, the cocky type of artist that fabricate a lot of stuff. You know, that's the prima donna people that sit there and. They, they 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 try to portray this tough image, but really they're probably soft, you know. But and then and they expect everybody to kiss their asses and all that. And yeah. that, that's what I wasn't a fan of. What I seen a lot of it was going around locally or just in the hip hop scene period. And then it was also a time uh, after my grandpa passed. Uh, I spent about just a month, of, a month and a half away from just everybody and just kind of focused on the music to try to help get some of that stuff that I was filling out. It was kind of a a therapy project too as well. Well, uh, tell tell me a little bit about uh, some of your some of your major uh, accomplishments in the uh, in the hip hop rap business so far. I mean, uh, it, it's really starting to take off. Probably the last year or so, uh, I've been uh, I taught myself the production side of it uh, almost two years ago, and and yeah. I s started making the beats. And I was lucky enough to you know work with uh, Manish Law. I'm producing his next uh, like half of his next project, uh, Dub. Uh, Diesel, uh, I've produced a couple for his next project. Chris Barnett, I've got uh, about three on his next project, and and Rebel on. I also have a track called Breathless with him that I produced and feature on on his next uh, Against the Grain. And Dirty UA. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm down to work with everybody. Yeah, I, 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 at the first cypher show I, that I went to, I ran into him, and you know, I was all about getting him out there to check out some beats. Man, I'm all about working with whoever you know is trying to make the type of music that I'm on. That's a true fact. Yeah. Tell me about this uh, this tune, "Along for the Ride," featuring Manish Law. Yeah, yeah, that's first it. of all. Before you tell me about the tune, um, how late was he to the recording session? When you got <laughs> actually, <laughs> he has a history of being <laughs> late, or at least whenever I'm involved in different projects, he has a history of being yeah, late. Yeah, that's something that. <laughs> <laughs> that I really didn't push him too hard on. I did my my verses and all that. I was ready for it, and I knew I had a, a certain time period before the project was out, and we, we stay in close contact. So I didn't really rush him or have a certain time to get it in. You know, as long as it was in before the I was ready to put out the project, I was happy <laughs> with it. You know? <laughs> well, I always, I always kid Manish on this radio yeah. broadcast about him, and him and his uh, yeah. being late to things. Yeah, he'll, t he'll tell you himself. He's a space cadet. You know, he'll tell you that he's, he's a great guy. Yeah. Manish Law's got a lot going on now. That's right. He, yeah. And he's trying to do it all. He's it's trying true. to literally do it all. Y you know, and, I, he's, I, and he's got one, one, one of the big keys. I found to be a successful hip hop artist, you gotta the have Allen a, Keys. gotta have a Nigerian manager. <laughs> oh my God! He right. has a Nigerian manager and uh, Weasel Wiesel and Super Dave and everybody up in uh, 
Jackson City, which, by the way, they were supposed to be here today, but of course they're we're, not. What were um, they supposed to be last week also? Yeah. The same thing right. that makes you laugh makes you cry. <laughs> I, I just love this shot. Nigerian we're, managers uh, uh, make you cry. We're, we're, we're going we're gonna to put this up. It, we're, we're up on livestream.com slash Jiggy Jaguar. Yeah. If you're listening... Um, and if you listen later to the podcast, you can always go to that same address and find the archives. But we've got this this shot here of Dirty UA, and he's just so relaxed. <laughs> it, it's just, <laughs> I mean, it's perfect. <laughs> and we've got Corey in front. Oh, yeah, man. I'm doing this. I'm doing this. And then you got, uh, <laughs> and it's great, though. It's just, then, of course, my game is chewing his. Uh, no, no we don't got a shot of that. Yeah, just lay back, waiting for his time to to, to blast off. Oh, say what he's got to say. <laughs> yeah. gonna, speaking yeah. of space cadets, he's gonna blast yeah, off yeah, in a moment. And I want to put it out there. Uh, I want to be peaceful. I have nothing to do with <laughs> what it's about to happen. You know, I have love for everybody. <laughs> You're not the true bone tugger. All right. <laughs> no. No. Well, uh, we're we're gonna get into it. Along for the ride, featuring Manish Law, here on the world famous Jiggy Jaguar Show. <laughs> Cause I did it, I didn't mean no pain, there's no way we can relive it If I ever acted out and hang out loud, I lashed out vicious I'm not proud of that myself, that's just one of my defenses I know I need some change, but not the type of spending I mean the type that'll change you majorly that comes with this life we're living I hope it's for the better, I know success ain't given That's why I put my all in this, cause I feel it's the right decision I stayed up nice, just white and white, the rest of the world seems silent White awake at a higher speed just plotting my arrival I was patient for the most part Feel like I was on a ride that just kept going around in circles Somebody please shut down this right now Come on and ride it with us This life is but a big bus Just like it said on cruise control when the destination is up We'll ride this bitch till the wheels fall off Till our grind is done We will not stop, we will not go Willing that we will let you We always plot Seem like this shit stop I swear it did for a minute Gotta take a couple steps But they must have been snow printed it's like the ones that you've taken Having and shit Irrelevant don't exist But I know this journey's a bitch I also heard it is the journey that makes a man what he is My life is left its marks Marks bring out my character's glitch I don't trust too many people that's a pair in the shit When I don't say a fucking word Now word is that man's a bitch But personally I don't give a fuck It is what it is I'm in a jealousy filled world In a hate filled biz If I make it they just hate more they can't take it when you make more It's got me shaking my head Why is this right so full of fake for? Come on and ride it with us This life is but a big bus Just like it said on cruise control When the destination is up We'll ride this bridge till the wheels fall off Till our grind is done We will not stop, we will not go Willing that we will let you We always yeah. ride Sky the marvel all yeah. One of one The pride and joy of Lee And the son of John But now they call me man. Now they call me giant one Now they call me frequently eager to be beside me I love it though I love the hoes I love the ladies But not like I love my bros Well get no set case clothes Many clips at the end of it It just ain't so Take notes and it might get you somewhere Study me and it might get you some flag Fuck look to the get you stairs I don't even mind me it, Who cares That's just how beasts play The illest in the weak state As long as y'all got me Sleep easy We straight I'll take you there And then bring you back They shoot a course Of course and lost me Y'all be singing that I'm no show so I just made the rap I'm blessed and expressed that I paid you back So here's my contribution I rhyme while you grin And thank me later on For the chances I put you in Back here on the world famous Cheeky Jake White Show at www.cheekyjakewhite.com. Uh, along for the ride featuring Manish Law on that one. And uh, I'll, I'll tell you, Corey, man, Manish Law, man, when, when you can get the guy motivated, uh, he, <laughs> he does some good stuff. Yeah, yeah definitely. Uh, a lot of him is the beats definitely got to speak to him. And if it does, he'll hop right on it. You know, yeah. Now, uh, your second project, Year of the Ox. Now, that is not about... Former professional wrestler Ox Baker. No, not at all. Okay. I was, I was, I was, I was, I might have been a little bit before my time with that, but no, that was actually uh, I'm an Ox. I was born in 1985, and it was also that the year I did that was an Ox year, 
and I maybe kind of put it was my year. That's kind of the the thing behind it. And uh, yeah, it was the second full length project I did. It was a mixtape. Um, that was uh, maybe right around when I started producing my own stuff. I might actually yeah. produce one thing on that one, but mostly it's mixtape stuff. It was just kind of pretty much like I said, saying it was my year, being an ox and everything with, with that one. Now, uh, tell me about this track, right? Slide right over, featuring Chris Barnett. Yeah, yeah, that one's uh, man. When I when I did that on my show, I I was lucky enough to be part of the uh, Cash Hollister show out in uh, Wichita at Rock Island, uh, probably about a month ago, and we performed that one and. They, you know, people really were drawn to that. When they say that was probably one of the better uh, produced, everything, one of the more favorites off of the, the project. Um, they, you know, they say it was an instant classic. Uh, that's one of my favorites off of it as well. And Chris Barnett, I can't say enough about that guy. He's very talented as well. Yeah, very. Uh, I love the song, and uh, I produced it. I sent him the track, and I had it back in about two days. You know, he got right on top of it. <laughs> You're just all over it, brother. He probably didn't record it at Unt's house because you would have had four kids and married <laughs> and retired for rap by the time he got it back. <laughs> I'm just playing on. I love you, dog. <laughs> <laughs> by the way, we want to we want to mention that Corey J's appearance today is brought to you by our good friends at Flash Bandit Universe, uh, FlashBanditUniverse.com, Flash Bandit Clothing, and uh, also keep in mind, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to be talking about my good friend Marcia Smith and her hollow victories over there at Community Access Television uh, later on in the broadcast. Mike Game is not the only one that's going to cause some controversy today. We're also going to be talking directly to you. Racist Ed Baldwin. Uh, you're going to have to wade through white guys and Negroes and, and all those N people that you hate so much. He called so, them Negroes? Well, he called them something else. Okay. We'll, we'll Did he call them niggers? That'll work. <laughs> <laughs> that, Bing! That crazy Ed. <laughs> crazy Ed! <laughs> are, you, uh, are you about to play? Yeah, Spiral? we're going uh, to play it uh, right uh, now. Uh, one more thing. I Jump in there, brother. Yeah, the, the, the whole thing behind it, the basis, is like uh, what I see going on with the, the local hip-hop scene. There's a nice... Uh, core a group of people that are coming together and it's really pushing it to the next level i feel and that's kind of the i want to do is a remix of this one too it's just about how it's kind of our turn and everybody else who isn't with us or kind of a part of what we're doing can slide yeah. right over you know because it's our turn now uh one thing that once you guys get get together so you guys seem to be getting together and doing positive things in wichita find a club that has some lights <laughs> because <laughs> I've been blue goat spoiled. I went to the Eagles Lodge a couple couple weeks ago, and it's like, where's the lights at? How am I going to film anything in here? So, you went you went to what, Frida's or something? Or No, it wasn't Frida's. It was... Uh, um, down uh, down in Old Town. What is it called? Uh, Rock, Rock Island? Rock Island, yes. Yeah. No lights. Like like two lights, I think. <laughs> uh, very very weak theatrical lights. That, Somebody get these people what, some lights. What, do you guys like what? What's going on? Do you like to, do, <laughs> nah, it really just uh, depends. Do you, well, do you like to to, to perform in silhouette? That's what it seems like. <laughs> That's a, what it seems. Like. Well, you take it. A, you take into account that a lot of the ra- lot of the rappers who do these shows are fucking awful. Then they they would li- they would need as little light as possible, so you can't remember who the fuck that just was. <laughs> but depending, like it, all, it really all depends on where you're at and who's on the lineup. Because Rock Island, depending on who you are, will treat you right with the lights. But it, most times, no. It's kind of like <laughs> most times, it, no. It, it's kind of like drinking a nasty mis- mixed drink. It's better in a dark glass. Super Dave. Oh, what are we get the Super right. Daves here? <laughs> Okay. We, need, we need to get Super Dave on the phone. Um, Three, two, one. Super! Super. <laughs> Slide right over featuring Chris Barnett right now. Corey J here on the world famous G.E. Jigway Show. Back in 